I, I was wondering what are the kind of standout quantitative metrics or signals that you look for to indicate that a company is ready for a seed round? A seed round? Um, so I don't do a lot of seed. Um, and um, I'm trying to think. So one of the seeds we did, like when we led one, it was like, there was no product yet. It was like a very much investment in the team and the market because then we knew the team. And so that's, you know, that's one piece of it. I think what you're looking for is kind of like, well, market size, like clear articulation of market size. That is not like, I read this report and it's a hundred billion dollars. Like it, it's like an actual, <laughs> like, um, like kind of bottoms up detailed, like, do you really understand the market that you're operating in? Um, kind of early indications of like, I mean, it depends on seed is such a range now, but I'll talk about the earliest. It's like customer discovery. Like what is the real pain point? Like, can you really clearly articulate what that is? Um, mm -hmm. And then I think it's like, do you have a vision, at least in venture of like the reasonable path to the scale you'd want to see in a venture backed business? Like, what is that? And mm -hmm. like, because sometimes every a lot of people are like we're 100 million in five years. You're like, okay, so like, what's the actual <laughs> like path to that? And and I'm not saying you should like put a ton of like energy into like some insane model, but like, what are the reasonable assumptions that have to be true for this for this business to to work like that? And you might have just like early data on it, mm -hmm. but I think that those are kind of the things I'm I'm thinking about is like, and and then the piece I would just say is like. It's not the quant. It's not exactly the quantitative you mentioned, but like, do you really understand the competitive set? Because a lot of people, some people might start companies, and I'm not saying it doesn't mean you shouldn't do it, but like, without really getting that there's someone who's doing that, and like, you can't really articulate how it's different, and like, you might mm -hmm. think it is, but like, how is it? How how is a customer going to understand it to be different? I think that's another piece. Okay. But is that helpful? I think I think the biggest things in the early stages are like, in terms of quantitative, is the really clearly understanding the market and understanding your hypotheses and assumptions have to be true for you to be able to attack it. And then, yeah, just like, what's the, what are the, what's the, what's like happening to competitive set that's like, that you see something different. Mm -hmm. Is that helpful? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Once you get more series A, you have like more like, this is our run rate and this is our year over year. <laughs> and then you, you have a little yeah. bit more to go mm -hmm. off. Hi again. Um, mm -hmm. I was wondering if you could talk a bit about the recent decline in female founders' access to capital, um, particularly kind of in the last quarter, and whether you see us returning to pre-COVID, kind of pre-COVID trend um, after a vaccine, or whether this is kind of going to remain on the decline for a while. It's a good question. So my my hope is that you see um, the I would say the rebound. I would hope you'd see more than what we were seeing prior. Um, I mean, I think the decline now, and I have, and I know the studies you're talking about. I haven't looked at it like super closely, just to be honest. Um, you know, I think it's a lot around. Um, you know, the real, like my co-founder, for example, has three kids and all of them are learning upstairs right now. Like we have a house, we have an office here and, you know, there is real ramifications for, um, that experience. And I think we're in it for a little while and it definitely influences like the way people, people working. And, um, I do think the other piece of the, like some people talk about, pitching like over zoom being positive like an equalizer over time potentially where you don't have people who are like able to fly and be away from family and be able to come to the valley in new york and boston um, and pitch and like that gives them more access so some people are saying that zoom might be good for that over time i just don't know yet like if that's going to be true if because the other side of it is like it just, you aren't hanging out with people. So people, I think some people are being more cautious in their check writing early if, if they haven't met someone in person and all this other stuff. So then you might default to 
your traditional means of like, do I know this person somehow? Are they like part of my like, you know, little circle of people? And that might, you know, cause some of the same trends that you're talking about. My hope is that, I mean, I, I hope as kids go back to school and as people start to just understand, at least for the short term, this is like, I think people are there, but like understand this is how we're, re this is reality. And I do think we'll see more. I think people still wanna do in person. I do think we'll still see a lot more Zoom style diligence. Um, but yeah, I, I do think it's it's a sad, I mean, there's just a lot of things that have disrupted. There's a lot of activity right now in venture to your point, but it's like in, I say survey. I think a lot of that data is reinforcing some trends that might not be great. So for example, on the fundraising side of the VC market, it's like been one of the hot, like the biggest years in terms of funds getting raised, but it's like 90% into like giant funds that are on fund like 15, right? So it's like, you're seeing the same, I guess what I'm saying is like your trends are mirroring where like there's a lot of capital going places, but it's going into like the safe bets in ways that um, might not be helpful to this that part of the market as much. But you know, like I, I participate with all raise and things like this. I'm really hoping that we see it coming back. But to your point, I just like, don't know. I don't know the timing of it. Um, I don't, that's probably not at all a helpful answer. I'm just like bummed out by it. <laughs> like, it's just one of those things that's like. Yeah. Well, but I think you hit on an interesting trend as well, talking about how the existing funds are getting like yeah. capital raising on the fund side is there's been a ton of activity. You see the same thing in the equity market. Like people are moving into equities a ton. Those are appreciating in value a ton. This right. is this is the same thing. Those who might've been in equities are now moving into venture because right. there's a higher potential for return there where right. um, if they can't get the return in the equity market. So right. that could be part of it as well. Yep, yep, I think that's right. Thank you for the question. It's a really great question. I wish I had more insight into it. So my question is, uh, what are some changes you, big changes you see in your um, portfolio companies or your understanding about the species for future of work because of, because of COVID? Yeah, um, so the kind of the trends that underlie our thesis um, have basically just been accelerated by COVID. Um, and it's funny, like I have to, when I'm talking to investors, I'm like, this is all pre-COVID data. <laughs> like, you know, a lot of this stuff is just um, really accelerated. So, so for example, many of our companies just grew tremendously during this time. And part of that is because we believe that they're solving like real problems using tech, like I kind of mentioned before. So, you know, the, the uh, Alice mentioned a company that's helping liberal arts colleges make sure their students are actually ready for jobs when they graduate. So they're providing white labeled, it's called Podium Education, just announced their raise on Wednesday of last week. Um, you know, they are helping universities actually deliver the type of classes that those students need to have a job once they graduate and a job that's like commensurate with their degree level. Mm -hmm. um, but we're excited because it's also still, um, that liberal arts college can still you know, do what they're best at, which is this kind of, what well, we, we call it the uniquely human skills, the communication, collaboration, all that stuff's really important still, right? Um, so we saw like massive acceleration because universities, a lot of schools just weren't ready to go online and internships were gone for students. And, you know, they're thinking about what the job market's gonna look like when, you know, after COVID. And so we've saw like a lot of acceleration there. We saw a lot of acceleration in our um, freelancer marketplace I mentioned. And so in terms of the trends that were actually underlying the thesis, we saw, we don't think they're new, they're just accelerated. They just got moved up a lot. And we think they're here to stay. They were just a little bit farther down the horizon. Remote distributed work, you know, DE and I, like these are all things that were, um, we were investing in kind of prior to COVID. Um, and the portfolio companies though, I think some things that we've seen is, you know, many, many already have remote distributed teams to some degree, but obviously, now, you know, for example, I was talking to one of our CEOs last week and she wanted, she was talking about her first VPN hire and she wanted, she was thinking, well, do I take this, do I hire the person that's in the city we're based in or someone in, you know, across the country? And we were having that real discussion in a way that probably wouldn't have happened pre-COVID. Like you might have hired that person, but like, 
you know, there would have been probably a preference for the person who was more like located where you were. And now we're just having a conversation where it's like, okay, well, if you really like that candidate more, let's now, like we have, as I mentioned, a culture person uh, who helps us with uh, advisory work. And it's like, okay, so why don't we actually just invest in you actually building out the structures you need to have a remote distributed team earlier? Like not, not this like way we're all doing because we have to do it, but like, how will you actually build, like uh, build the infrastructure for your team to scale that way over time? And so I think that's one of the things that we're seeing, at least in the portfolio itself, is when you think about team and hiring, like where are you going to hire? Um, there's a lot more openness to uh, a more dispersed team than you might have seen at the earlier stages. Because um, people like to, they used to like to co-locate and, and sometimes they still want to. Um, but I think that's one piece that we're excited to um, help support companies in is, is having that built built right from the beginning versus like backwards fixing some challenge you might have around the remote distributed piece. Hi, Ashley. Uh, thanks for taking the time to talk to us today. Um, my question was, um, are there any qualitative quantities that you look for in deals that you invest in in terms of the team members? And um, what are some of the strategies that you use to determine those qualities? Mm. Yeah. So on the qualitative side, um, uh, well, so one of the big things that we're looking for is, uh, this culture piece I was talking about and how do even early stage CEOs think about that? Um, we don't, I don't have a perspective of saying like, if you're not this way, no, like, but it's more like, what is your philosophy? How are you thinking about it? And then, you know, what do you want support in as a team? Um, are, are we going to be a good fit for you in terms of like what you want for your your next phase of, of, of the company? And so um, looking for that articulation of how the vision for the company in that way, as well as like, are they open to like feedback, like both ways and like, what are their goals for themselves as if, like, are they getting themselves support now and do they want it? And like how, like, yeah, what goals do they hope to, to see for themselves and their team? So a lot of it is around thinking about like what support the founder and the people around them will need as they scale. Um, and then the other piece on the qualitative side, that's more on the culture piece and the growth side. Um, you know, we are looking for folks who have like really deep nuanced understandings of the markets they're investing or they're building companies in. So oftentimes, not always we're investing in, you know, second time founders, um, at a, at a minimum someone, you know, not a minimum, I shouldn't say it that way. Um, but, you know, certainly looking for again, like a real understanding of the pain point. And because, so I used to, my previous fund did a lot of focus on just education technology. I'll just use this as an example because everyone went to school. So a lot of people have strong opinions about like how someone should learn math, for example, but that doesn't mean like the pedagogy is right. <laughs> you know, like there's a lot of people who like go in and they want to build companies. It doesn't mean it's wrong, but it might not be like that. Like it might not be a real venture backable market opportunity based on a real problem right and so like someone having a really nuanced understanding of like why this is a challenge and like what we should do about it and is important because there's a lot of ways of, of going after the same problem um but even identifying the problem and then like thinking through the full set of how you would do it um is important I don't, is that helpful yeah, that's helpful. Thank you. The ones on the kind of like the team, the team side, and then the other piece is like, I would say most on the actual like product side. Thanks. Yeah. We do software or tech companies, I should say, and some of them are more like tech enabled services. Um, but those, um, I've done like a healthcare company too in my past, which has different kind of attributes. Um, so each of those debt industries has like kind of different margin profiles and different growth rates and market sizes and things, but you're still, I think if you're taking venture money, looking for market sizes, 
um, product market fit, growth, similar things. But I think the primary difference is the margin profile and then the sales cycle. Um, also not sure if your time is what experience is most helpful. Also, Dar, I believe we've met before. before. Right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, you look familiar. Um, yeah. Most helpful to my career now in VC. It's not VC. Mm. I think so. Honestly, for me, and this is different because I'm a thematic focused investor. Like, I view myself as someone who like works in human capital and education, and I do it through VC. Like, so for me, probably the the things that make me more valuable as an investor are that I have different types of networks that I bring to the conversation. So I have different experiences and different, um, just different people than your average like investor. So like one, one investment I led, like as part of my, when I was preempting around, I made an introduction to the former sector of education for him. And that was like really helpful. And so it's, it's having some like different people um, I, I'd say it's because I've kind of stayed uh, in a like a thematic area, um, but I've done different things in it. I've taught, I've worked in policy, done VC. I worked at, you know, I've interned in and around different pieces of it. So I think I have a, a slightly like broader view and it's not like I just work in a tech company in it. Like I did completely different things that are also still relevant to the category. So I have a, you know, some different perspectives to bring to the table. And that's if you're, if you're, you know, thematically focused. If you're not like, you know, I would say having some, some having basically, I would say building expertise outside of VC around whatever you're trying to do in and around it is probably the way I would answer that uh, most effectively. Thank well, you. 